Here we go. My name is Paula Kemp, and uh, I am a, not a Navy veteran. I was a combat photographer in the Naval Reserves from 2000, I'm sorry, from 1998 until 2006. When, um, when I went in, I went into a, a very unheard of uh, program that was called AIA, and I didn't have any former military training. So uh, pretty much my unit had to teach me everything. I didn't even really know how to turn on a, ca a camera or a computer back then. Um, they had to teach me everything. But it, I was a duck to water, and I had a fabulous unit that took me under their wing and really uh, just saw my potential, I guess. and and really encouraged me to be the best that I could be, even though that wasn't the Navy. But um, anyway, you can edit all this out, right? Because I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> uh, let me start over. Um, um, You're doing fine. Uh, yeah, so how did I, so I became a combat photographer. Um, that was the only billet that they had opened at the time, and I loved it. I started learning how to be a better photographer and taking better pictures and doing lots of, I volunteered for everything. Well then 9-11 happened and uh, I ended up being gone quite a bit. And one of the uh, precursors to that I guess you could say is um, I really enjoyed what I was doing. So I got to be um, involved in a couple of different training exercises. So before 9-11 we had a lot of training exercises. And one of them that I got to go to was called Fleet Week. And so it's where they get to do, they do the parade of ships and things like that. But you're also on board ship practicing and training and, and working on different things. So I was always active and busy. When we got up to San Francisco for Fleet Week there, um, I was there early. And they asked me to go out and scout and uh, try to get different locations to take the, photo the photos, place our photographers and, and different things like that to cover the event. So I was looking around and I looked up and I saw this beautiful Golden Gate Bridge. And I said to one of the other uh, ship's board photographers, I said, you know what, that'd be pretty awesome. Just what kind of a picture would that be up there? And uh, he said, oh, that'll never happen. You'll never get up there. And I thought, well, all right, we'll see. So I kept scouting and I started meeting people and asking them and I went from one museum to another, and then eventually I ended up um, talking to somebody who knew the manager of the bridge. And I got an appointment with him, and I asked him if I could go up there and how amazing it would be to take photos of Fleet Week from the top. So I had to send my life away, and um, he took me on a four and a half minute ride up the elevator, and just happens to be that this is what I got to see. I was the first military photographer ever allowed to the top of the Golden Gate Bridge to take photos. And at that time, I was the second female allowed up there, second to Queen Elizabeth of England. And um, it was just an absolutely amazing day for me. And that was in 2003. Um, I knew that that was life-changing for me, when, especially when somebody told me, oh, you'll never get up there, that'll never happen. And um, anyway, that was just life-changing for me, being up there and taking that photo. It was absolutely stunning. So as my photography experience grew and my talent, I guess, grew, um, I started getting recommended for different jobs in the Navy and got to start traveling more and more. And eventually they asked me to go to the Middle East. And in the reserves for my unit, that didn't really happen. You, you volunteered. You didn't really get forced into anything at that point in time. So that was in 2005. I, I, um, I agreed to go over to the Middle East, wanted to participate. And this was going on year seven of my service. And um, so I had had some things that happened, you know, different trainings and different things that you're exposed to. And, and as a mother of three, you know, I, I started noticing that things were affecting me, um, things that I had seen you know, possibilities, um, just the experience of, of reality, or, or it could be reality, talking to and interviewing people that had gone through some horrific experiences, and um, having buddies, you know, that had gone through some really bad stuff, meeting Vietnam vets, um, just being in the community as a veteran, or as a military service member. Um, so, 
I went to the Middle East, and when I came home, um, I, I was there. So my purpose was to go and photograph um, or document the deployment and then the transition of incoming to outgoing and the flow, the, the deployment of the whole thing to coming home again. And so I was there for 30 days. And um, while I was there, you know, I was running around and, and taking pictures of everybody that was doing their jobs through this transition to coming home. So I got exposed to a lot of different stuff, and it was very fast. And But while I was there, I was also, I had a tour guide and a journalist and stuff kind of work as a team. And they took me around to these different things and events, you know, places that took place during the um, desert storm when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. And they're pretty horrific. And um, it was, you know, I don't know if it's a cultural thing or, or what, but it pretty much a lot of the areas were, they had never been touched. They'd never been cleaned up. Um, I don't want to say superstition, but they just would not go back into these areas and clean them. So it was very real. And um, it really affected me. You know, I took pictures of all of this and had to document it, and um, so when I got home, uh, I started having the nightmares and all of that about it, and um, this one particular nightmare was when I was there, I saw a man that was in, in his, um, oh gosh, what do they call it? Anyway, his white garb um, cover-ups, and he was a cement worker, and he was basically a slave. So if you weren't a Kuwaiti citizen, you know, they don't call them slaves, but you're a non-citizen and you're not treated that well. And he had this look on his face that was just so, um, I don't know, I don't know what to call it, but it was just very begging, you know, of help me and just him being stuck. And it just triggered something in me that I, that haunted me. And so... That's one of the images in my head, and I did not take a picture of him. I just felt that would be too rude. But um, that was one of the things that just kind of haunted me. So that started my therapy. I thought that that was what my PTSD was coming from, and I thought it was kind of silly that, you know, it wasn't somebody being shot at or, you know, there wasn't a lot of death and mayhem and destruction. It was after the fact, you know, tanks and boats and, and things that I saw, um, but it really affected me. and. I came home and I ended up getting out of the Navy uh, about a year later and I just started having a lot of anger outbursts and, and these nightmares and I was becoming hyper vigilant and I was just fearful and I didn't know what was going on. So I went to the VA Loma Linda and then I got introduced to the vet center and I started some therapy. I felt silly at first that um, I, I didn't feel like I belonged because how could I have PTSD is what I kept thinking. And I just, um, sorry, I'm kind of going into my zone. When, um, when I started processing a lot of this stuff and, and realizing that, okay, yes, I had PTSD and accepted it, I then was ready to start going back to school. I thought that I could go to school and get my certificate or my diploma, or not diploma, but my credentials in photography. So my kids were older and I wanted to do something with myself. So photography was all I knew, and um, I decided I would go back to school for that. So I, had, I got really pissed off because in the Navy they told us that you know, your schooling would cross over and um, it'd be equivalent if you went to, to the college, it would kinda, you can merge it and make it a, an easy transition into the civilian life with your earned degree in the military or trainings. So I had to take this stupid art class, and I was so pissed off that I had to take an art class because I cannot draw stick people to save my life. So I showed up the first day, and of course my PTSD is getting triggered, my anger, my ang I'm a PTSD anger person, and um, I wasn't a very nice person on the first day of school. Lo and behold, it was a marine instructor, and uh, he was... Uh, Marine veteran, and now he's taught art. 
so we just hit it off and I just started bantering with him like we always do and um, you know he took it really easy on me and he understood of course PTSD and encouraged me and motivated me and I ended up loving the class at the end of the semester he um, of course you had a project, you know, the end of the year, or the end of the class project, final project, and um, I told him I was wanting to, I was starting to see these images again, and I kind of wanted to pull them up and do this collage, and I'll have to bring it in to you, Rick, um, that uh, was some of these photos that were in my head of memories of my visit in Kuwait, and I wanted to put it on this poster board and just splatter them with paint, and just these angry, violent images that were going on in my head. He's like, do it. I said, nah, I can't hurt these students in here, these poor little babies, I don't want to damage anybody. And he said, he said, do it. All right, Maureen, I'll do it. So, um, so I did. And by doing that, I had to drop my photos into Photoshop and look at them, which I hadn't done for years. And I was also taking a multimedia class uh, as part of my crossover training. And I was learning how to manipulate um, we used Photoshop in the Navy, but we weren't allowed to go in and really play with it. It was more for, um, you know, you, you captured your images and you sent them off, and then they were declassified later. But my position, I didn't really play a lot in uh, Photoshop. I knew basics, but not that much. So I was learning how to manipulate and play and paint and do all these really cool things. Um, so I dropped the photos in there, and I finished my project for my art class. But I had a project then for, um, for the multimedia, for the Photoshop class. And so I got in there and I wanted to take one of the photos of, of a, a boat. And this boat was from, it was on a, a dock, uh, abandoned, in Kuwait. And on the side of this little boat, it said, never forget our POWs. And it was one of the hauntings that I'd had for years. And um, it just pulled me to it and I had to take a picture of this boat. And so. I pulled that up and dropped it in, and I thought, this would be really cool, I'll just see if I can like paint it, you know, like with the mouse, and just kind of just mess with it and manipulate it. And so that was this one, this one here, um, that it kind of turned out to be kind of a, a light, bright looking rendition. So this was the abandoned boat, and then when I dropped it in, I went in and I just kind of started painting and playing with the actual image itself. As, as a boat. And it turned out pretty cool, but something happened when I did that, when I finished it and I looked at it and I got triggered again and I started crying and I was really angry again. And you know, it had been like four or five years. So I thought with all the therapy I'd had, I thought that it was, I was healed. <laughs> but um, I started scribbling and I just was in there just with the mouse, just scribbling and manipulating. And when I came up for air, realized that I was done, I was done crying, and, um, and this is what it was. And I looked at it, and I see a bird, and I don't know if you can see that that well on the video, but it's kind of, I, I, I think I titled it something like The Rebirth, or Born Again, um, and it's kind of, it's a, a phoenix. Um, you can kind of see the bird's eye, and, and truly, this is not anything I had in my head. This was not something I was trying to create. It created me. And um, that was when I took it in and I showed it to my art teacher. And he really felt that I was onto something and um, that I should continue doing that. And I felt so good after having barfed out you know, my anger onto my photos. And I took a horrible memory and I turned it into a beautiful piece of art. And I was pretty proud of myself for that. Um, but so I thought, well, if it made me feel good about that, let me drop some of my other horrible pictures in. And that's when I came up with this collection. And I just started taking all of these different um, pictures of places that atrocities happened and turned them into pieces of beauty. And it really changed just my whole, I could breathe, I could, it was just so different. Um, the satisfaction that I got from it and the healing that it created for me. And I became very passionate about art therapy and got involved as much as I could at the time um, with having going to school and 
and still continuing with my um, therapy at uh, the VA Loma Linda and also at uh, the vet center. And then my vet therapist, um, he said, what are you doing with your, you know, your, your works? And I said, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, they're sitting in, in the corner at home. Yeah, I don't know what to do with them. He says, let's have an art show. And I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> I don't want anybody to see him. I was fearful of judgment. And so he talked me into it. And at first it was just me. And then he shared a p couple of my pieces with the other um, uh, therapists and counselors in the building. And they decided to open it up to all veterans, of course. You know, the more the merrier. And all of a sudden, we had like 25 veterans that were doing the same thing. And it was one of the most amazing nights of my life where I got to see all this work from Vietnam, actually from World War II, Vietnam, Korea, and then on to our, our um, campaigns. And it was just phenomenal camaraderie to come together and share this little blessing that we were able to pull on to sustain happiness in our lives. And um, it was just really awesome. So we did that, and then they started an art group at the Vet Center, and I participated in that a few times. And my life just started changing. It started getting better and better and better, and I was no longer sitting on the couch at home, not having any direction. Um, you know, there's, there's a handful of things that really helped contribute to my um, getting healthier and absolutely art therapy was the biggest um, well kind of up there with riding my Harley but um, getting out and about and doing uh, fun things on that but no I, I really believe it was even more so than that because it was something tangible that I could hold on to and see and when I shared it with other people they got it and they understood it and and it helped them and I've helped a couple of people take um, their ugly images, something that represents um, something to them, and drop it into Photoshop and manipulate it around and turn that same exact thing into something that doesn't have to be scary and traumatic for them anymore. Um, and then that's also what launched uh, Veteran Sisters, which is what you see me wearing. Um, I started a nonprofit for female veterans suffering with PTSD, MST, anxiety, and depression. And um, it's just been a huge, remarkable existence now. I, I couldn't be happier. And being able to give back and help um, other veterans and, and then also, also helping um, female veterans, it's just been an amazing journey. And I really do owe the majority of it to my finding my way through art therapy. That's my story. What's the uh, uh, web address? Well, the website for Veteran Sisters is www.veteransisters.org. Okay, thank you.